are live. Okay, so hello, welcome back, Open Farmers, uh, to our heat transfer series. So we are discussing, we were discussing buoyant simple foam before, which is a steady state uh, heat transfer solver, convection solver, uh, for both natural and forced convection. And in the last video, we saw how uh, having a constant heat flux, right? Constant heat flux, uh, boundary condition, actually uh, changes the way the flow pattern uh, is done. And we also found out how to, uh, you know, set up uh, proper heat flux conditions, okay, using the uh, fixed gradient kind of a boundary condition. So that is buoyant simple form. Of course, before uh, before uh, we go on to uh, the non-steady state version, we still want to explore some other features. All right. For example, you see this thing called hot radiation room. Hot radiation room meaning to say that. Hey, the buoyant simple foam doesn't just solve for you know convection heat transfer. There is a radiation aspect as well. So um, that's an interesting thing to look at because uh, you know some heat transfer models, especially if things get really hot, we do need to take into account radiation, and this is definitely something worthwhile looking into. So let's take a look at first how this uh, all run file is being run, and see what are the programs that are running. Okay. So this, this case is pretty simple. It's just running a block mesh and running the get application, which is buoyant simple foam. If you look into the control dictionary. Okay, so where's the control dictionary? Again, for those not so familiar, you should be familiar by now, but uh, this is where the application is from, buoyant simple foam. All right, every time you see that get application, that's where you find it from. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, zero directory where we will find boundary conditions okay so there's a GTU blah 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 we have discussed uh, all of this before except for this G term so let's take a look at what is inside this G okay so it's a volume scalar field the dimensions are 1 0 and minus 3 so mm, that is some kind of a uh, yeah it looks like uh, something to do with radiation okay so the bound there's a internal field of zero boundary field of zero uh, okay so this this looks like it has some something to do with the radiation okay so in in that sense you need this extra little input file all right so that we are just going to explore the rest and how it is different from let's say the uh, convection case we are talking about earlier so all clean we, we kind of know what it is uh, but let's take a look at the system directory and let's look at block mesh to see what the geometry is like so we'll see lots of vertices here meaning to say wow this is this is pretty complex shit as far as block mesh goes uh, personally I wouldn't recommend writing block mesh like that it'll give pretty much a headache I'd rather use a snappy hex mesh using a uh, some sort of uh, computer aided design so that you don't have to do uh, vertices uh, point by point it's really a big headache to go and write this out but that is that all right that is that next thing we take a look at it is the control dictionary okay the application is born simple form blah 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 uh, we have a right interval of 100 blah 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 nothing nothing too new here delta t can be one because it's a steady state solver all right so let's take a look at FV schemes. Okay, this is in case you want to uh, copy and paste the file over, or you want to you have a geometry in another file that you want to run boil simple form in. You gotta give the solver boil for boil simple form some inputs. So these are the inputs you need to give boil simple form. So it has it'll tell you yes you have to tell boil simple form. How do I solve these divergence equations? Okay, so all these here you'll need to take note of if you want to port it over. So these are all the inputs you need to give it. These are just input files. So DDT is a steady state, as you can see here, Gauss linear scheme, blah blah blah. Okay, so nothing too new there. Alright, let's go to every solution. And again, we'll we'll have uh, some some other inputs and for you hk and epsilon we'll have these solvers p rho g h the solvers g will be the solvers and g remember this is a radiation thing 
Okay, so we'll have all these factors in. It gives it a very high degree of customization. So I'm not going to go into detail. I want to explore some of the constants here. So as you'll notice in the constants, we will have G, which is the gravity. So we can take a look at G. This is a different G this time. This is a gravity, 9.81. We can take a look at uh, turbulence properties. So this is a K-Epsilon model, a uh, very basic turbulence model, nothing too fancy. You just, uh, if you're not familiar, please go and take a look at my intermediate open form course, uh, where I'll talk through some of turbulence. Um, and take a look at the thermal physical properties. And since we are kind of a little more into buoyancy in both form, we can explain these things a little more in detail. All right, so what is H HE rho thermal? What is all this talking about? This as well, this is on the site here, uh, called thermal physical models. Okay, so um, open form can allow thermal physical properties to be constant or a function of temperature, pressure, and composition. So basically, you have an ideal gas equation of state where there's a variable density. Okay, so what is this uh, thermodynamic package? All right, how is this uh, pressure, volume, and uh, pressure specific volume or in other words density uh, 1 over density uh, how is it all being calculated so this this is what uh, what is being used to calculate so and then you have some uh, reference pressure down here which is about one at uh, one bar okay so these these are the various uh, inputs we can give but let me zoom in on he rho thermal he rho thermal which you can see over here. All right, Hichiro thermal. This is a general thermal physical model, and the calculation is based on enthalpy, okay, or internal energy and the density. So that's why you have a H, which is enthalpy, E, which is internal energy, and rho, which is the density. So this is what it's used to calculate. Now, of course, you, you can have other kind of uh, things here. Uh, for example, HG Psi Thermal, this one, at, at this time of making this video, I'm not that sure what the site is, I'll have to look that up. But uh, in terms of in terms of this, you can you can take a look, right? So this is a, for like, for example, a pure mixture. If you have a, if you have a mixture, I mean, a, a pure, like, yeah, unchanging mixture, you can almost treat it as one homogeneous uh, mix, where the composition doesn't really change much. Well, let's say the composition change, for example, in this He rho mixture thermal, and it will calculate enthalpy for combustion based on uh, enthalpy H, blah, blah, blah. So this is for something where a chemical reaction is happening, and open form can deal with that um, to um, give you the desired results. But in, in terms of heat transfer, we are not going to talk too much about that. Okay, let's take a look at pure mixture, right? Pure mixture is here. What is pure mixture? This one is a general thermal physical model calculation for passive gas mixtures. So for unreacting gas mixtures like air, you use pure mixture, which kind of makes sense. So transport, let's take a look at what the transport is saying. Transport, uh, it says it contains coefficients for the chosen transport model, see below. So what is this chosen transport model? It says the thermodynamic coefficients are Austin. Oh, okay, I'm not going to read that. My ink, I don't feel like it today. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so they are concerned with evaluating the specific heat for which other properties are derived. The current thermal uh, models are described as follow H constant thermal, which assumes a constant CP, specific heat capacity, constant pressure, specific heat capacity. So HF is heat of fusion and it's simply specified by two values cp and hf given by keywords cp and hf all right there's the e constant thermal which assumes a constant con uh, constant volume heat capacity and heat of uh, fusion and then this will be used to calculate this is jaina or yana i don't know how to pronounce uh, but it uh, gets uh, CP as a function of temperature, which is the so-called real, a more real representation of what the the constant uh, value 
no, the heat capacity is like. So it gets it from some table of thermodynamics and the ordered list of coefficients is given in table 5.2. So this is how we define it. So uh, Right, these are the coefficients in table 5.2 that's according to this guide um, so you need to have a function between a, a lower temperature and upper temperature as you have seen uh, especially chemical engineers you should be familiar with this because you see this uh, happening in you know Paris chemical engineering handbook um, pretty common okay it's a varying uh, CP with respect to time okay so if you want uh, to uh, have your own polynomial uh, expression of the CP you can you can actually give it as such okay so um, yeah so transport model okay so let's take a look back here Ah, thermal, okay, I think I was explaining for this one by accident. Okay, so thermal is H constant. So this is a very simple model. You just give two constants. One is CP, one is heat of fusion. So, I mean, at the temperature of our interest, we have a constant pressure specific heat capacity. Heat of fusion is just zero because there's like no phase change or anything. So we don't really have to bother. Okay. Hmm. So let's take a look at transport models. So what is this transport models? Constant transport assumes a constant mu, which is a thermal uh, dynamic viscosity and a Prandtl number, which is simply defined by two keywords, mu and Prandtl number. So this is the uh, mass transport. Uh, mass transport, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it talks about uh, uh, viscosity. It talks about convection. So uh, that will affect convection a lot and the heat transfer, of course. Um, so it assumes a constant uh, dynamic viscosity and Prandtl number. So this is what the transport model is talking about. So you can see um, for, let's say, thermodynamics, you have to define the CP and HF. For the transport, you have to define the mu and Prandtl number. So of course, you can have other, again, other uh, polynomial functions as before uh, as much as you can calculate uh, thermodynamics uh, properties such as CP based on temperature you can uh, define uh, mu and uh, kappa which is the this is part of Prandtl number anyway um, you can define these as uh, part of a, a temperature function which is again more realistic but um, it is more realistic, but uh, doesn't really. Uh, you don't really need uh, that that complex a model for air. So in this case, air will look something like that. So there's a species named air, and the species is like n uh, the some number of moles, molecular weight, thermodynamics, and transport are listed here. So in our input file, we just name it as mixture. Okay, name it as mixture, and the species is this, which is obviously air. We just don't call it air, um, but that's that. Let's, let's go through the other options. We'll explain it uh, bit by bit. Equation of state. This one's fairly simple. Let's see whether we can find uh, other equation of states here. All right, so uh, you have a perfect guess here. Perfect guess equation of state, or ideal guess, PV equals NRT. Um, Ico polynomial, which is an incompressible polynomial equation of state, for example, for liquids. Okay, so in this case, the equation of state is a perfect guess. You have liquids, okay. So I believe there is one thing called specie. S P E I C E. Alright. Okay, so this is a uh, derived thermal physical properties. So this says that uh, thermal physical properties are based on CPH and OS. So I suppose, yeah, you have to, what this is saying is that, okay, uh, based on these two uh, 
based on this uh, thermodynamic model, you calculate everything else. So that is that. Let's go for energy. Go for the energy entry. All right, so open form allows thermal physical properties to be constant, functions of temperature, pressure, or composition. Thermal energy can be described in the form of enthalpy or internal energy. So in this sense, we are using sensible enthalpy as the mean measure of energy rather than internal energy. So this is what the thermal physical um, file is about. Just give you a more detailed explanation. Oh, I'm already like 15 minutes in. Okay, so let me stop here. Um, and I'll try to uh, explain some other um, explain some other things uh, like the input files. For example, this boundary radiation radiation properties. Okay, there's an emissivity and absorptivity. Um, yeah, you can explain that a little later. Doesn't have to uh, probably in the next video. Uh, I'll discuss some of these things, and then we'll try and run the file and see, you know, how. Um, how how it is run and how you no know, radiation is put in. So uh, let's stop for now. I'll, uh, uh, yeah, I'll I'll continue next time.